when we deal with phase equilibrium, think of uh, liquid and vapor as two phases, and you'll have uh, an exchange. Some of the liquid will be transferring into the vapor state, and likewise, the vapor into the liquid state. If there's an imbalance, then it's not in equilibrium. But at equilibrium, the rate at which liquid goes to vapor and vapor goes to liquid is balanced. So we have the Gibbs function. It's made up of how much is in this phase. They use this prime and double prime for maybe the vapor is a double prime and the liquid single prime. But it indicates the different phases. So the amount in that phase times the molar Gibbs function plus the amount in the other phase plus its molar Gibbs function is the total Gibbs function for a pure substance having two phases. So that's what the primes indicate, different phases. Now at equilibrium, our criteria is the change in the Gibbs function at constant temperature and pressure, or a fixed temperature and pressure is equal to zero. And also what we just described, what how much the rate at which or how much is coming out of one phase is equal to what's going into the other phase or coming out of the other phase. So they're at equilibrium that has to be a balance equal to this prime is equal to that prime. You apply the chain rule for this differential change to that function, Gibbs function, and then you conclude that the molar Gibbs uh, function for each of the phases has to be equal to zero. Or we also saw that the chemical potential is another way of describing that molar Gibbs function. So the chemical potential uh, of that pure substance in each phase is equal. 